So we said a dark 3D rendering of a fearsome dragon in a Pixar animation style. So let's see the result, bang. That is absolutely fun. Flux is the best AI image generation model that there is on the market today. And I'm about to show you guys how to use it completely for free. But before we get into it, I have to get this out the way. I don't care if your best friend who's an AI expert or your AI mentor has told you that Dali is the best AI image generation model there is. They're lying, they're capping, they're yapping. Let's get into it. Flux is the best. Let's move on. Also, I don't know if you guys could see, but I have a little Goku figurine there in the background because someone left the funniest comment of all time in one of my other videos saying that he asked me if I'm a deodorant collector or something like that. I was like, you know what? Fair play. I probably should change that. So let's get into the video. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of a background with Flux because some of you guys might not already be familiar, but I'll keep it pretty brief. Now, Flux was made by a company called Black Forest Labs. As you can see, I'm on their official website right here. And if we scroll down, we can kind of get a few examples as to what Flux is capable of creating. Now, this is Flux point one. A lot of these images here, are, I remember them far back, maybe like six months ago, these images were here. So since then, I'm assuming there's a lot of better stuff that they can create. They just have, don't seem to have updated their website since then. What they have updated though, is when I first started using Flux, there was only three separate models. There was Schnell, Dev, and Pro. And the way that you would categorize them is you would say, Schnell is the fastest, but it's really the shittest. Then you got Dev, which is, you know, medium pace, but it's also medium quality. And then you've got Pro, which is highest quality, but it takes the longest. Now, what they've introduced is something called Flux 1.1 Pro. And what it does is it's meant to be six times faster than Flux Pro without sacrificing any of the quality. And in fact, they say it's meant to be better quality while being six times faster. So really, if you can help it, you pretty much always want to use Flux 1.1 Pro. So that's pretty much all of the background that I'm going to give you. It's really all that you need to know. I am also going to link the official GitHub repository for Black Forest Labs in the description. It has a bunch of nerd If you know how to read the nerd then I'm sure you can help yourself to this. Now let's get into how you can actually use these models completely for free. So let's on head on over to a website called Glyph. Now, as you can see in the top right hand corner here, I'm already logged in. If you don't have an account, then just create one login. It's not that hard. And before I get into the method that we're going to be using, I do want to say, just in case there's some smart in the comments that say there's different ways of using Flux for free, of course there is, there's about four or five different reliable ways that you can use Flux, all of which are listed in the websites document within the free community that I have. I'm not going to go over all of them, I'm literally just going to show you guys the one that I use, I've probably used over a thousand times at this point, so why would I show you guys the ones that I don't use when I can just show you guys the ones that I do use, I guess? But yeah, in saying that, if you guys do want to join the free community, we're up to 227 people now, which is pretty sick, you get access to a bunch of different stuff, one of which we're going to be using throughout the video, or two of which I guess. The first thing is going to be 20 unique image styles, which we're not really really going to be using too much but the other thing that's really important for this is the way that you're going to be structuring the prompts for flux or really any other ai image generation model so that you can get really what you're trying to get out of whatever it is you're trying to create so we're going to scroll down and over here to the image creation section and this is what we're going to be using for the video now finally that we've got all of that very very necessary yapping out of the way let's actually continue with the tutorial so you're on the glyph website you've made an account and you're at this home page once you're here all you're going to want to do is click on build and when you click on build you can basically build your own AI node interface. If you guys are familiar with Comfy UI, which you probably wouldn't be, it's a pretty complex application, I guess. You'd be very, very, this is so much more simpler than that, but it's going to get you to this page. You can title your glyph anything you want to title it. We'll just make it image generation. And I'm going to show you guys two different methods here, okay? The first method I'm going to show you is so unbelievably basic, but it's really going to give you everything that you need to have. The second tutorial I guess I'm going to show you guys is the one that you can use if you want to create like the top of the line, top quality. It's going to use more credits here, but it's going to be like, you're, you're really not going to be able to create anything much better than that. So let's continue with the basic one here. You start with building a glyph block. The first one we're going to put is a text input. Obviously, this is the window that's going to capture the prompt that we use. From there, we're going to have it lead on to an image generator. So this is literally as simple as it is. You have got the text prompt here. You'd use the text prompt to create the image down below. We can name it if we want to. Let's just say, let's just say prompt. And then we can name the image down here. We can, I mean, we can just name it image, okay? All right, so we've got the prompt box set up right here. We've got the image box set up right here. Now, all we have to do is configure it the way that we want it to be configured. So it says image generation model. This is where you can actually get it to control whatever the model is that you want to use. So we've got, as I mentioned to you guys at the start, we've got Chanel, we've got Dev, we've got Pro, and then we've got Pro V1.1, and then we've got Pro V1.1 Ultra, which obviously is the best one in terms of quality. Now, it is going to use the most credits. So if you want, you can see right here how many credits it's going to cost, or like the estimate, I guess. So if we were to go down to Schnell, 
it changes drastically, okay? So actually, matter of fact, let's just keep it a little bit on the lower side. Let's just use Lux Pro here and use 8.75 credits. And what we're going to do is we're going to put, you see this bottom right corner here, it says prompt. All we're going to do is put that prompt. And what that's telling the system is basically whatever the prompt is over here, it's going to get automatically inserted over here. And then it's going to use that prompt to create the image that comes out on the other side. Now, we do have an option for the image size. We're just going to put it on landscape, I guess. And then you have an advanced control section here. If you guys don't know, it's this works the exact same as any other image generation model. The steps is basically the amount of hoops that the system has to jump through before it comes to the final conclusion. I guess it's the amount of like iterations that it goes through before it fully sets out your image. We're going to keep that on default 28. If you want to, you can keep it towards the higher end if you kind of are looking for a high quality image. It doesn't really change too much in my experience though. The guidance scale is very simple. It's how much it adheres to the prompt that you're putting inside of the box. We're going to keep both things on default right now. And then you've also got an option to randomize seed. It's a bit of a, you know, more advanced technique, but if you get an image result that you like and you want to keep the foundation of the image the exact same, then what you would do is you would uncheck this and you would put in the seed that the image was in order to keep it the same. But we're going to randomize the seed here and then let's get up to the top. And just like that, it literally took, I mean, if I wasn't yapping, it took about one minute to set up. So it's so unbelievably simple. And now what we have to do is put in the prompt and get the result. All right, so now that we're at the stage where we need the prompt, what we're going to do, you guys can follow along if you want to. We're going to head on over to the image creation side of the document that I gave you guys in the free community. And we can see here, let's scroll down. Uh, this is the one that we're going for, okay? So usually what I would advise to do with these examples, as it says at the top right here, is to take this example, put it into an LLM like ChatGPT or Claude or Grok or something like that and use that to enhance the prompt but you're going to see here in a second why we don't have to do that so instead what we're going to do is we're just going to create our own base prompt and we can enhance that later on when I show you guys so we've got the structure here it says a and then an adjective we're just going to say a dark and then you've got the image type we'll say a dark 3d rendering of a adjective so we'll say a dark 3d rendering of a fearsome dragon in a we'll say uh, Pixar animation style, because if you remember correctly, this is the 20 different unique image styles you can use. And so we've got Pixar animation there. We'll just use that one, okay? So let's head on over and let's remember what our prompt was going to be. Thankfully, I've actually written it down so I don't forget. So we said a dark 3D rendering of a fearsome dragon in a Pixar animation style. And we're going to click generate here. Now, I know that you guys might think that's a big complicated process, but the prompt actually comes out to be extremely simple. Like it's literally a one sentence, one line of prompt. So for all of that text that's right there, you just get a good foundation for what you should be creating, but it shouldn't be like a major paragraph until you put it into the LLM. So let's head on over and let's see what it created and how unbelievably fucking insane is that? Keep in mind, this was using... This is using Flux Pro. So if we wanted to take it up a notch, or I guess two notches technically, we could use Flux Pro V1.1 Ultra, okay? But that's basically the, the first example. It's the basic one, and it's really all you need unless you're looking for the top, absolute best quality versions you can create. Now, you guys are probably wondering, you're probably saying, you said it was free, but your credits went down. You've only got 21.3. Guys, listen, I'm not saying to do it. I'm not saying that I do it. All I'm saying is you can get, you know, as many email accounts as you want to. The, the credits refresh daily. I believe you get 30 credits daily. If you put it in you can make like 60 different images times that by however many different emails that you have listen that's all i'm saying now let's move on to the more complex one that you can actually get better results from so we're going to click build in the top corner i don't know why i said top corner in the top middle again and we're going to start off with the exact same foundation so we're going to put the text input there and then what we're going to do from here is actually different we're going to put in an llm because this is the box that we're going to use to enhance our prompt so i'm just going to put in 3.5 sonnet we're going to fill this in later but what we're going to do for now is get our blocks set up so we've got just to recap we've got the window where you put in your prompt you've got the window that'll use be used to enhance the prompt and now we've got an image generator like we've got before but that's not all ladies and gentlemen because we've still got another box left which is going to be the upscaler and what we're going to do here is we're going to click on glyph block we're going to select the glyph and we're going to scroll down until we say see image upscaler clarity and then it's because it's going to come up with a box here where you can upload or paste an image url we don't want to do either of those things what we want to do is we want to insert the image that's produced over here into the final upscaler so now we've got all the windows out the way that's all we need just to recap we've got the text prompt we've got the text prompt enhancement 
then we've got the image that's the result of the text prompt enhancement and then we've got the upscaler of the image that was the result of these things okay that's all we need that's the foundation now from here we actually need to fill out the features the exact same as we did before so for the sake of simplicity we're just going to do the same stuff we're going to make that the prompt box we're going to make this the prompt enhancer you need to put a hyphen by the way you can't put a space then we scroll down and we do this is just going to be the image and then the last thing is just going to be the upscale and i know this seems tedious but it'll help you guys if you're new to keep organized of what you're actually trying to do here so let's do that and now if you guys want to use whatever model you want to use then that's fine that's up to you i've always used 3.5 sonnet obviously since then 3.7 sonnet has come out but you're, you're going to spend way more credits using 3.7 so i just keep with 3.5 because it's what i've used for literally thousands of different generations over here you guys can use the exact same thing that i'm using here take the following image prompt and improve it whatever 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 what we're going to do is we're just going to put in the prompt box and basically, if you guys aren't aware what I'm doing right now, if I'm going too quickly, this prompt is basically referring to the first box. So what it's saying is that whatever text was input in this box, it basically gets replaced with whatever's in between these quotation marks right here. The image we're going to leave blank, the temperature we're going to leave default, advanced controls we're going to leave default again, and then describe the image. This we're just going to fill in with the prompt enhancer right here. So the enhanced version of the prompt is going to be what is used to create this image. That's all that it's saying. We're going to change these to the same settings as before. Now, let's actually to max out let's just see flux pro 1.1 ultra because we're only going to do one generation then let's do change this to landscape and then scroll down and the image upscaler we're going to put in the image right here so this is taking the image from up here and we're going to upscale it using this so i've absolutely just speed run that let's see if i didn't fuck anything up okay so let's use the exact same pump that we had before let's say a dark 3d rendering of a fearsome dragon in a Pixar animation style. And then just to recap what this, is, what this is going to do for you guys, it's going to take the basic prompt, it's going to, to enhance it in this window, then it's going to take the enhanced prompt, it's going to create the image, then it's going to take the image and it's going to upscale the final image. And that's going to be the result that appears right here. And all this is only using 10.35 credits. So let's click run and let's see what, get the f*** out the way error. I don't make no errors, I don't make no errors around here. All right, so let's see what it creates. Obviously, guys, it goes without saying, because there's four different steps, and not only that, we're using a better image generation model, it's going to take a little bit longer than the first one used. If you're more about rapid pace and you just want to rapid create stuff, then just use the Chanel model. You'll, you'll literally get the images in like five seconds, if that. So let's wait a little bit here. Let's see what it creates. And in two seconds, to be honest with you, the upscale is usually the thing that takes the longest. But what I will say, just in case you guys have to go through the same mistakes that I made, the upscale usually f***s up when it comes to like text or when it comes to people it'll skew things a little bit but if you're just talking strictly landscapes or like i guess more things that are holistic then it usually improves it in that scenario all right guys the generation just finished here but i have to be a youtuber here real quick even though you guys are going to hate me real quick guys join the free community you'll get access to all of the documents that i've referenced throughout the video and also i've literally just released this booking call thing that you guys can do if you want to talk to me directly in a one-on-one -on -one call it's nobody else it's literally me then go to the website i'll have a link below you can book the call and you can talk directly to me so let's Let's see the result bang you cannot tell me that is but that is absolutely fact that that is genuinely fact anyway guys that's the end of the video thanks for watching bye